everyone saw the moon last night? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, it's clear we are all already oozing our spirits, feeling them all blend together, nurturing each other, recreating each other as, as we are born into this yet another day in our lives. Blessed be this yet another day to stand before you in thanksgiving to feel embraced by the universe, to feel embraced by Gaia. Let us especially today and tomorrow think now of her perfect, this phenomenal universe that we are only beginning to know about in more and more detail, one discovery leading quickly upon another discovery. And yet what we learn we know, we've known from the beginning, that she is vast beyond, she has no edges, she is vast beyond speaking of. And no matter how great, uh, how great the tools we build to see deeper and deeper into the unknown vastness of this dark, dark universe, she will always have places where she will never be seen. This vastness that we can scarcely comprehend but that we bring to bear in our souls by simply believing in it, believing that we have been chosen to be part of this life, this vast complexity of life, all of the different systems from the microscopic to the macroscopic to the infinite. That we are able to receive information not just in terms of knowledge, but in terms of inspiration and prayer. So that as we inspire her body and expire the very air that is another manifestation of her body, that we draw in and breathe out this principle of unity and connectedness with all that is. Today we're going to speak about Sophia. We touched on it briefly yesterday when I made my own personal relationship between Sophia and the Black Mother, the great Black Mother from the beginning of time manifesting through many, many cultures all over the earth until finally settling the continuity, of course, still alive today in Kali, especially in Calcutta, where there is obviously, as you know, animal sacrifice still to her daily. So the great mother who devours, that we stand before her knowing that ultimately we will be devoured by this great devouring mother who will reconstitute us, reform us, reshape us as part of the invisible flesh of the universe. That we are never nothingness, that our body becomes nothingness as it fragments and moves out into substantial changes. But that this nothingness in terms of matter is everything in terms of the spirit's final release into pure spirit. And this she calls back to herself. And we become one more tiny, tiny part of the massive support system in this miracle we call Gaia. So we'll speak of Sophia. And I want to show you some of the, uh, some fabulous icons Greek and Russian icons. I found um, a number of years ago, I was asked to teach at an art school in uh, Umbria, about an hour north of Rome. And after I finished my time there, I, I went to Rome and had a, had a week there by myself. 
and I hadn't been back to Rome um, for many, many years. So, and a week, to have a, a week in Rome is nothing. So I, I knew before that I wanted only to go visit the, um, the mosaics in the um, half dozen early Christian basilicas, which go back to the 400s. And uh, especially uh, the great Mithraic temple beneath the, uh, the basilica of San Clemente in, in Rome. And to visit the collection, of course, the great, quite apart from its, its uh, historical, uh, the historical Catholic thing about the Vatican, the Vatican is one of the great museums of the world, and I needed to spend some time in those galleries. And so whatever day it was, I walked through, you know, I, and I had a very, very interesting pension, just about a 50 minute walk from the Vatican. So I walked there one morning and um, walked through Bernini's colonnade into the great piazza that you see on television all the time. And there were these fabulous, long, thin banners flying everywhere uh, that said Sophia, 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 everywhere, Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. And I thought, oh my God, what, what is going on? And I realized when I got near enough to read the information on the banners that there was an exhibition of these fabulous um, icons in one of the uh, uh, exhibition galleries associated in the whole, of course, the whole Vatican complex. Well, it's a city, it's, but abutting the, the, the colonnade was a, mu a little gallery museum. And I walked in and there were hundreds of these Sophia figures. And I had my camera, and I didn't see any sign that said "Don't take pictures." So I snapped away. So I, I'm, I can't show, show, you, show all of them to you, of course, but I can show you a few. And I love it when I can work with my own slides because it's I still have the energy of oh my God, yes, there it was. And then we're going to move into the area of shamanism, shamanic experience, and my own work, which I have deeply understood for a long, long time is, is my own shamanic work. I firmly believe that all creative energy, creative work, is shamanic work. So we'll talk about that and we'll certainly talk together about this because I really, <coughs> I really want to hear other people's experiences in this area. And that will be our day, the, the slides in the morning and um, our, our, our time together. And um, this is, a, that's a flicker calling to you. There he is. Mm -hmm. Up there on that uh, branch to the far right. Mm -hmm. The flicker is one of my spirit animals. The flicker spoke to me even when I was, in fact, the, sp uh, the flicker is one of the spirit animals that came to me and was one of my guides out of the monastery. Now, before uh, I've said enough, uh, before we um, um, do our little quick prayer circle, before we go in for slides, uh, I, I would I, let's, let's hear some stories from you, dreams last night, or uh, things that we, energies from yesterday that you, you went to process. Um, please speak now. Please. Just hold it, hold it in, in your lap, lap. And, and forget it's there. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't want to do it, I really don't want you to do it. Okay. Um, I really would like some some comment or help with this dream um, and, and it's it's short but in my dream there is a young child digging and um, this young child and, and actually I think it's a, it's a little boy but um, a male child he uh, digs down deep and finds a box, a wooden box, and it's, it's a kind of long, narrow box. 
and I'm there and we open it up and in it are three large snakes and, and the snakes are embedded in some dirt. There's dirt around them and they're kind of lying in there together. Um, in other words, they, they seem to be very, um, very content. And that, that's the first part of the dream. And then there's a second dream, but, okay, and there were three snakes if I said that, didn't say that. The second dream, there are three women, and, I, and I'm one of them, and I actually recognize the other two women. And uh, one of the women, is um, she's sick, but but she's sick because she has been um, she's had a great amount. She's an alcoholic, and she's had a great deal of alcohol, and um, she's lying on the floor, and we're in a we're in like a gymnasium. Uh, well, in a building like gymnasium, but we're in the the bathroom trying to help revive her. And we finally get her revived and take her out. And we're with um, a man who is a doctor. And um, basically, that's, that's the end of my dream. The, the three women and then the, the man. But the, the man is uh, very balanced in terms of um, being balanced in terms of his masculine and feminine. But he is a healer, obviously. So that, that's my dream. Does anyone want to speak to this? I will certainly speak to it. The uh, digging, of course, is the uh, is one of the most common and powerful understandings of 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 of, of your of your spiritual search. Uh, you have to initiate the action, and the action is one of of seeking and looking in a, in the most in a most physical way. The fact that um, you or that person um, is helped by a young boy or a, a, a young man, whatever the age anyway, you have a very, very active, if you yourself want to identify with this digger, you, it, it's a manifestation of a very active animus, I think, young, vigorous, and um, filled with great certainty that he is there to help you and direct you. And in fact, he does so in a most amazing way because he leads you immediately to a manifestation of the triple goddess. The serpent is, um, is of course, a familiar of all three phases of, uh, of the goddess, all, well, in four, the dark of moon. And the serpents, of course, are the serpents, uh, is energy from the very center of the earth. The, the serpents are the, the animals that live or dig the deepest are the greatest curers. Uh, the animals that, that burrow, like the badger and the bear, um, that, that dig and burrow and, and, and need to uh, you know, get down in there, not only to, to find critters to eat, but also by their very nature. And from uh, the Native Americans here, uh, think of bear medicine and badger medicine as the most powerful healing medicine. That's why you very often will find for sale at gath in Indian gatherings, you will find bear claws and badger claws for sale for that reason. So it's a wonderful um, 
again, that, uh, that digging to reveal what is hidden. But what is hidden wants to be seen. The, the, the gift wants to be found, so to speak. You're not sort of, it's not accidental. You were led there, uh, and there was the mystery. And then the second phase is, is, seems to me just a repetition of the, of the first energy. Uh, the animus is an older figure, but again a healer. And um, he leads you to another manifestation of the triple goddess. What is the last part of that last, last phase? The um, doctor? Uh, there is the three women yeah. and, and one is sick. One is sick, that's he's right, that's right, that's right. And uh, we bring her out to him. Right, okay, okay. It's a wonderful, wonderful dream. Um, it, it would be up to you to, um, to understand that personally. And, and I mean, obviously, you would understand it the, in, in a, I'm speaking only in the most exactly. archetypal way. But it's, uh, that's a great image for all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a great gift to the, to the group that you've uh, brought, the, brought this dream to the group. Thank you. This is why in the uh, snake dance in the, uh, among the Hopi people in July, um, four days before, the men go out and um, gather in uh, rattlers and, you know, in, into burlap bags. And on the day of the ritual, they bring them in, first of all, to the kiva where they pray with them, and then finally into the plaza where everyone is gathered. It's closed now to the public, but it used to be open until maybe about even 15 or 20 years ago. Um, and the, the, the chant, I mean, the, the, the prayers continue all day and, 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 and the dances and so on. The, the, the dances among the Hopi are fabulous. The kachinas are, it's a different, uh, different kind of kachina. It's a different uh, kachina energy. The masks look different, they are different and so on. The names are different. And at the end of the day, at some point, when the stories have been told, so to speak, and the peoples are ready, um, the burlap bags are literally tipped over and the snakes just are in the plaza. And of course the snakes move like crazy to find safe places and they move back qu as quickly as possible into holes or places to hide. And the understanding being that they, they take the prayers of the day the prayers of the people, the ingathering of the communal prayer, and take it down into the depths of the earth. Uh, so the, uh, it's the deeper the prayer can be buried, the more powerful is going to be your response. <laughs> did, the, did the boy want to say something? <laughs> Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. That's perfect. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, thanks. Any other stories for us? I had a waking dream, kind of, about four years ago. That will probably, I will be trying to figure out the rest of my life. <laughs> And a snake came, and it was green with yellow dots. And it put its mouth on mine and wrapped itself around my body and took me down into the earth. And so I could breathe because its mouth was on mine. And so I went your, down. Your breath was the, the, the breath, breath of the, of the snake. snake. And then he left me. And I was in this cave that had three rooms. The first room was all these bodies intertwined. It wasn't sexual, it wasn't an orgy, it was just beautiful. And I just observed it, I went to the next room and there was this black woman young, beautiful, 
sitting in a chair with arms, but her face was like that. You know those onyx masks you see in Mexico mm -hmm. that are real like mm -hmm. rectangular mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. her face was real but it was it was made like that then I went to a next room these are successive rooms mm -hmm. going in, in a, a straight in a, direction no they're, they're kind of they're, round they're, they're wander, they're wandering yeah. rooms okay okay and it was this old old woman who's you couldn't see her legs because her legs were part of the earth and she came up and she was like made out of the earth and I knew she held I knew she held all the wisdom that was ever to be held then the snake came and did the, the same, same thing snake? same snake and brought me up green and green with white po uh, yellow polka dots um, yeah green okay. with yellow okay. polka dots it's one of the reasons I'm here because I will be figuring this out the rest of my life and I would say it's how I reverse. need teachers. It will just keep <laughs> nourishing you the rest of your well, life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Figuring it out has nothing to do with anything. Well, that's true. You don't have to read. <laughs> you just eat the, you eat, the you eat the cereal in the box. You don't have to read any of the directions. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to play any of the games. You don't have to use any of the whistles or games inside. Uh -huh. Just you know, open the box and eat it. Don't worry about sure. the words. Don't worry about figuring things out. Okay. We okay. don't figure these. We don't. We'll never out. figure it out. I do know that. But it's what gave me the courage. I've never done a workshop in my life. And I'm not, I'm not a person that's comfortable in groups. Hmm. I'm just. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> we could say that probably. Each of us could say this. Probably. No? Uh-huh. And I'm starting to realize that. But I also know I need teachers in my life. And if I stay in my own little secluded world, I'm, I'm not going to have teachers in my life. So, but, so it feels good to be here. Well, mm -hmm. this is a good opportunity to thank each and all of you for trusting me with this, with this, uh, thank you, with your hesitation to be part of a group because I'm certainly the same way I, I don't yeah. go to workshops I've never gone I to workshops when you've told that story to you and uh, I but this I, it's clear to me it's been little by little I've been I've, I've been made to understand that this is this is one of the things I do in this lifetime and then as I say when Manuel came out of one of those journeys and said priestess I mean one part of me was was just Revolted because it's not a word I've ever been comfortable with. Um, uh, even even uh, the word goddess, I, I don't even use the word goddess. I just, for me, she's simply Gaia, great mother. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think in terms of these. The, the words have been so politicized that I can't deal with them personally. But I, 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 I do sincerely thank you for giving me this trust and 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 open in in trusting the other women most of you didn't know anybody mm -mm. you came not if you maybe a few of you knew each other and this is the miracle of the grace of um of liberation i mean once you're you stepping over the threshold into decision making like that is a liberation you get this mysterious thing called grace that it's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. That mm -hmm. I know I'm supposed to be wherever it is you have chosen to go. And because we only learn from each other. Yes, there's of course great learning to be had in books. Of course. But you know, isn't it really that we learn from each other? The real life stuff. And that we share our life stuff with each other in this way. Does anyone want to comment on Colleen's dream? Except to say, lucky you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> lucky you. It's kind of, I'm in but awe of I know, it. it's so amazing. So and it happened, oh, wow. what, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by waking I wasn't, I wasn't asleep. You know how you, you can have these dreams. Liminal. It's called the liminal yeah. place. Well, you're not asleep, liminal means but you're threshold. Just about asleep, and then you go, "Oh my God, what just happened to me?" Mm -hmm. You know, what was yeah. this? And then you can't sleep for hours. <laughs> it's okay. But you know, it's happened a couple of times. That was the most profound one I've ever had. Mm -hmm. 
But oh, I'm a great believer in daydreaming. I think oh. we should, t I mean, a, a period of daydreaming should be scheduled <laughs> in your in your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, however you schedule it, schedule time to do nothing but daydream. And I call it staring out the window. Staring out the window, mm -hmm. staring into space, stroking an animal and just drifting, being just being in touch with that animal's energies. Um, the animal will love it too, of course. <laughs> Other stories? I think it's been less than a year. Well, maybe. Let's say fall or spring this year. I just had this sense, and I see images, you know, and I saw these snakes coming out of my belly. You know, it was just like like three to four snakes but they would come out and they would they would come at different times and they'd come and, and they'd look around and then they'd go back in and it was like these almost like the color of eels kind of wound around in the belly and at different times they'd come up and look and at first it was like you know it was kind of scary I thought it was kind of negative you know like I was denying something but after a while I realized I couldn't get rid of them it wasn't like, it's like I couldn't think them out, I couldn't, you know, draw them out. And so I realized that all I was supposed to do was to carry them around mm -hmm. and allow them and to be conscious of them coming up and looking and moving through my body. And it wasn't the whole body, it was just the belly. And I carried them and it was just, it was just carrying them. It was kind of unusual, but it was like being pregnant in some way with something that was other that was, you know, interested in the world. And that was it. Mm. You know, and it's just, I don't know. You became a basket. Yeah. You became a container for that energy. It's almost like they needed to be contained before. It, 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 your being safe in your container, the container of your body, liberated them to move out and then pull back and then move out and pull back. That's a beautiful image, really a powerful image. And I bet you they brought you a lot of information just moving out and seeing and then drawing back in and bringing back into you what they had ingathered in terms of energy and seeing. Those, those are huge gifts. I'm sure they're still with you. I think they're, they're hibernating. Mm. And snakes symbolize rebirth because they shed their skin every year and they're reborn and it's transformation but these are and this was your belly they were in. Well, it's kind of funny because I think I'm hiding. I've said that a couple of times. I, I, I got this, um, I'm enjoying hiding and I have a good <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, <laughs> you know, don't, like, that, that's a great yeah. positive, yeah. But it's also like I, I keep getting this word, you're playing too small and it's just, like, well, and I have a choice. I can continue to play small, because I like it, or I can take a wrist and kind of move up. And um, I mean, it's not up, but it's out. And it's kind of like, I, I, it's like, I wonder, I'm on the threshold. I have no idea which one I'm going to choose, because I don't like the stress of it. But on the other hand, you know, I'll, I'll choose. But I can be either one, mm, and I make the choice. That's mm -hmm. just what I was going to say. I don't think it's. I think it's either. I, it's 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 your choice. It's mm -hmm. either or. There are times when it's this, and times when it's that. I feel comfortable in the question. Yeah. As long as the answers don't come from the outside, for all of us, we don't don't look don't look outside. These answers are all within your own sacred marriage. Your sacred marriage with your own. Um, divine uh, daemon, the spirit, your, your, your masculine spirit within you. You know, we're, we're, we're used to hearing about the, the, the masculine muse, the poet's muse, but we have a muse, and we have that wonderful word, not demon, but that wonderful word daemon, that inner masculine, and uh, certainly women creating alone, uh, in, in, in my case, living alone, I, I, my, I, I really work very, very consciously in terms of my animus energy. To, um, it's another reason I was, um, when, when, I, when I lost my male dogs, I was very aware of losing 
the, the, the presence of male energy in my life. But um, I'm just going to say this one thing in the shut up, and it makes me really sad. But I, you know, but I, I think I'm more yang than yin because I've been in the, the world all my life working, you know, and it's just. Um, And it, it serves me, but I'm also coming back to balance or trying to come back to balance. Because mm. I can do really well in the outside world. I'm like a warrior woman. But on the other side, I get tired of Of course. Of worry. course. Taking care of. Yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, how do you step back from that mm -hmm. image? And it's really hard. Of course it you is, know? Belinda. But it's like, Those are huge choices. Know. It's just intense. Mm. But anyway, I didn't want to cry. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, and why would we not cry with each other? If we're laughing with each other, we've got to have shed some tears with each other. But I think that's what, I mean, I'm trying to be more balanced and get over the mothering, intense kind of energy. But it's really hard to do. And we'll see what happens. You are being mothered or you're mothering? I mother. I mean, I mm. take care of. Mm. You know, I, I tell everybody what to do. Mm. You know, it's just, <laughs> 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 you know, so. And it's hard not to, you know, it's just to be quiet. I, I noticed, like, yesterday I was very mischievous and I know, what is this person doing? And, and you know, and I liked it. It's like a kid, but it's like being nosy, too. It's like, what are they doing out there? Let's go out and interrupt them. You know, and it's like, today it's like, okay, Belinda, because my intent was to come and be subtle and be within myself. And yet I come, I go out, and I like that. But today I decided, unless energy takes me somewhere else, to sit in front of the altar and to draw the altar over and over again so that I can get deeper and deeper into my own process. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's really important. And I think not until today, which is the halfway point, that I was able to go, uh -huh. okay, okay. okay, we'll come back to center no, you're ready. And, st and settle. And in fact, it's one of the one of the most profound definitions of God. Uh, like many, like many of these profound insights into the Godhead comes from India. God is not this and not that, and that's we we all we we must all live with that. But we're it's not we're not we're not completely one. We're not completely the other. We are from time to time this and that. Uh, there are times like I'm doing moving out and doing this work and other times when I'm just the opposite. That moving out and coming back, like the, the waves moving forward and then drawing back. And that constant shifting. But the this, not this, not that, is in fact that place we are right now, that place of equilibrium that we're celebrating today and tomorrow. It's. One of the miracles of uh, I, I I love celebrating the equinoxes. The um, the solstices are more black white, aren't they? It's um, you know it's somehow okay, folks. We're ready to move in. Okay, let's just stand around the altar and say our our prayer. Does anyone remember where we stopped yesterday? Um, Let's link arms. Guardian yeah. of the land. Guardian of the land. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see where we are. Are you? We all, we all have a. All of the wild garden. Okay, well, Linda, start uh, with. Uh, let's see. Where were we? Oh, oh, eternal water. No, I did that yesterday. Hmm. I thought. Okay, I'll. So okay. We did ten yesterday. Okay, I'll do that. Oh, eternal water. Sign us, we beseech thee. O soul of the world, seal us, we beseech thee. O call, O call of the wild, return us, we beseech thee. O guardian of the peace, see us, we beseech thee. O hidden garden, enfold us, we beseech thee. 
O seed of wisdom. In the throne us, we beseech thee. O wellspring, contain us, we beseech thee. O alma mater, name us, we beseech thee. O holy trinity, awaken us, we beseech thee. O rosa mystica, enclose us, we beseech thee. O you who give the dream, inspire us, we beseech thee. <laughs> Hail, Holy One. Hail, Mother. Hail, Gaia. Mother of every mercy, Mother our life, Mother our hope, Mother our joy. Remember, Most Holy Mother, never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, sought your intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee. To thee we have come. Before, we, before thee we now stand in this circle of friendship and energy, giving and receiving these four days, being beheld by you during the day, the sun overhead, beheld by you, the moon, moving from the mountain across the river each night. Behold us, look upon us, Cherish us as we cherish thee. Bless our children, our friends, our partners, our animals, and bless us today in this third day of being with you and working together. Blessed be. Amen. Blessed be. Blessed be.